Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week on the show, we have a conversation with Matt Dutile, who is a commercial lifestyle photographer. And in fact, he's the first person to join us right here on our set. So here's our conversation with Matt Dutile. Well, here we are with Matt in the studio. And Matt, thanks for joining us. Thanks You're a lot. The, uh, have the honor of being the very first person to actually be on the set oh, for How They Do It's very that. nice to be here, so thank you. Awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about the kind of photography that you do. Sure. Right now, you're based in Arizona. Yep. But soon, very soon, you're headed to New York City. Uh, yep. Uh, come February, I'm moving to uh, New York City. In the middle of winter. Uh, in the dead of winter. So <laughs> I've asked all my friends and family, please buy me coats, hats, <laughs> scarves, <laughs> anything. Okay, awesome. Uh, awesome. So New York photographers, maybe you can help them move all those boxes in. But let's talk about the kind of photography that you do a lot of the uh, stuff that you do is location um, very environmental kind of so tell us yeah. a little bit about it um, actually almost I'd say 90% of my work right now is is on location work and, and that's really because I like being in an environment and working with what's there and there's so many different um, unique places and cool things you can find that if you just leverage them the right way in a photo it, it really adds a, a feel or a, a story to it it's right. usually what I'm looking to tell so um, being somewhere allows me to show um, kind of a, a story panel idea like here's what we're on a road trip uh, we're out on the beach for a day things like that so it's really more than just single image it's a story of images but right. also in a single image you have to be able to tell the whole story right right so it's tell the whole story in one image but yep. then also make sure that you have some kind of layout so if a magazine wants to do a five or eight page spread exactly like that, exactly they can do that um, and so uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the way that you shoot because sure. you're not a big gear junkie <clears throat> uh, no not at all <laughs> <laughs> I mostly shoot between um, a few prime lenses and um, <clears throat> that's really so I can keep mobile and on my feet I found um, when I started out I mean everyone starts out with their little kit lens and mm -hmm. then um, I moved and I picked up a, a 50 millimeter. I think that's usually a natural right. progression when people start the out. Nifty 50. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I found um, I really became in love with the shallow depth of field, but also being able to move to find a different angle. So it was, it wasn't just about okay, um, I'm not sure this is the right composition. So zoom to fix the problem. It was you had to move your feet, and that started me moving around in different angles around the subject and evaluating what looks best, what's in the background here. Um, how is that playing on on an angle, whether it's coming in from this side and maybe there's less um, a sharpness in the shoulder than it's sharp on the face and then grad, mm -hmm. graduates off again. So for me, um, I really like to keep it really simple with those prime lenses, again, because it allows you, um, you really have to think on your feet. You have to move right. to find the right angle. It's not just, oh, let me change my zoom. <laughs> and that really teaches you too, I think, um, about compression in the shots. And How long did it take you to do that? Because I know when I get a new lens, which is, <clears throat> isn't really um, maybe every couple of years sure. I'll buy a new lens because yeah. I've got enough lenses now, but uh, it, it'll take me a few months to really dial that lens in and, and become familiar with it. Yeah. Um, so how long did it take you to, to learn to discipline yourself with a prime lens that you're just moving your feet and finding the stuff? Um, you know, it, it's odd because some of it came quickly, but some of it um, I realized as I've gotten better and the work's progressed that uh, some of what I thought I was doing right was wrong at start. So, so what do you mean by that? Um, things just like um, you notice where you're framing things more, how, again, where things are falling in and out of depth mm -hmm. and, um, and how you want to utilize that. Um, so it, it usually takes for me like a few months per lens and, and sometimes what I tried to do was um, dedicate a month to a lens when starting out like this month is for the 50 and this nothing month, but the 50 and that's it and learn to use the 50 and if you can't make the shot with it you can't make the shot with it you've got to figure out what else you can do with that now do you do that um, do you have days that you're just booking models for uh, the discipline of learning how to use a lens and then you have other days that are like okay now I got to pay the rent <laughs> yeah, or do you yeah. just discipline yourself and you're like I'm only no matter what I'm using the 50 because to me that sounds like insanity no uh, there are days when you when <laughs> yeah. you got a paying job and you've got a client that wants a certain set of images right. you have to shoot what that set of images right are. the 50 not working it, out yeah the, the plan the plan <laughs> okay. doesn't go like no it's got to fit into the 50 plan no you've got to meet the client demand right. absolutely 
but um, outside on personal testing, which is really where I think um, uh, a person's creativity shines and you can come through with your ideas and really shoot um, what you want to shoot and what you want to express as a photographer, um, personal tests do that and that's where I try to sort of set my goal lines or, or look for certain things or um, usually like when I was starting out um, or even now, I shoot a lot of uh, verticals because I was always thinking shooting for full page. So there was right. sort of a month like learn the eight and a half by 11 crop, learn how much distance you have to get for headroom or, or on the bottom of the photo. Um, and then um, really utilizing that in all the photos, being right. doing that with the 50, doing that with the 35 millimeter. So it's always changing up. So it's not always like a month for this, a month for that, but that's right. sort of the idea. But some different disciplines Use something, that you're on. learn it, really learn it. Right. And then when you know those lens, that two lenses, then intermingle them in a shoot so you can right. get the right effects. And you're shooting all portraiture, is that correct? Um, pretty much. I do some um, travel work. Um, I haven't really uh, let it out to the wild yet. It's sort of a growing portfolio now. Right. Um, but a lot of what I'm concentrated in now is the lifestyle advertising is what I'm shooting. So let's for. look really fast at your camera. So we have sure. your, I'll let you hold on to that. Yeah. So um, I'm really uh, interested in this lens. So this is a 35 prime. Yeah, this is a 35 F2. Um, and you, you do use this for portrait work as well? Um, no, I'll usually pop on the um, a 50 millimeter for that. Okay. Or sometimes if I really want to flatten space and get I'll, um, I'll go out and rent maybe a, a 70 to 200 or um, an 85. Right. Um, but, um, but this is the main um, lens for most of my lifestyle work. Um, okay. Just because it gives me the right perspective I'm looking for. Because I don't like to flatten space too much in the photos. I want to right. feel involved and in it, but I also want to keep the shallow depth um, so I can isolate my subject from the surrounding. Right. Yeah, and so this is, you're using that for all kinds of... My, le uh, my lens of choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lens of choice. <laughs> it pretty much, um, on some shoots, it, uh, it never leaves the camera. On, awesome. um, on others... And then we know. also have uh, one of my favorite little devices here. This is the uh, reflector, so we're not going to pop it all out, but this yeah. is a, a silver white. Yep, um, it's a little beat up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, your gear is pretty much a camera, a lens, and a reflector and the environment around and me and the sunshine and and it's really it's a lot of it is learning to use um the light and the and learning the directionality of the light where is it coming from how is it interacting what is it bouncing off of um in certain shots you may get um, a building across the street that's you know glass or white so you've got a strong bounce it, it's noticing those things and and how it's falling in and out of the face and where the eye shadows are coming in. Or. So let's talk a little bit about a couple of specific shots. Uh, you just recently did a road trip kind of shoot with the model yeah, from yeah. Ford. Um, and uh, I really love these shots. And there's Thank one you. that she's like at a, a gas station, I guess. Yeah, we, uh, we drove down to um, Picacho, which is about uh, an hour and a half south of Phoenix. And uh, I had seen it a number of times driving down to Tucson. That's usually how I find most of my um, shoot locations. I'm, I'm driving by somewhere or on the way somewhere and I go, you know, that looks kind of cool. I could, I could sure, see yeah. a, an image or a story here. Um, so the idea was to create this road trip feel. Um, we're just um, this one girl on the road, stopping at the gas station at the motel nearby. Uh, we even stopped at the, um, the ostrich farm down there to <laughs> right. get some some different yeah. looks and some different uh, they had fun little animals there you know donkeys right. and birds and so the idea when I concept a shoot is always what's the story you're telling what are you trying to evoke and and second who might you sell that to or who's right. the audience so let's talk about specifically the gas station when yeah. you shot that image so we have uh, she's actually next to a, a white car yep and so that car actually, tell us a little bit about how you use that for some fill light and just um, using well, different Some lenses. shots I didn't, some shots I didn't. Um, the sun, um, there's a, the gas station uh, roof and she's under it and there's a gas station pump here and the sun's coming from this side. Um, and it was, I want to say somewhere around one or two in the day. So it was pretty high overhead. So we had some nice shade almost come in straight down so I didn't have to worry too much about shifting her left or right. right. Um, so I was really trying to, um, some of it was staying in the shade or some of it was backing just in or out of it. So you started to get the highlights on the shoulder and right. on the back. So um, backing out of the shade and letting shoulders or the back fall into direct sunlight is sort of just adding a kicker light or... Exactly. Right. It's like a hair light or anything mm -hmm. like that. It, it, the, the trick with it is to make sure it's not falling in odd spots on the face. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have her turn too much and then you've got this giant 
you know, hot spot. Right How much on direction are you having to give models for that kind of work where you're like, don't go back an inch, come back? I mean, is that um, difficult for I, them to adjust to? No, I actually, I, it's a mix. I give a pretty good amount of direction because um, before I go out and, and shoot something, I have an entire storyboard um, written mm -hmm. out. I have um, sometimes 20 shots written out that like, I want to get this. This is, you know, turn this way when the light's coming this way and this kind of, and, um, and then it all adjusts to what the environment is, and um, you gotta allow a certain amount up to chance just to see what happens. But um, for me, it's just, it's going out, being a good personality, having a lot of fun, getting the real genuine emotions out, because that's what I look for in my photography. It's not, uh, you don't wanna over direct to the point that it feels staged. Um, right, that and it's just robotic. Turn, and, and there's, you know, and just, exactly. <laughs> so to, to get, <laughs> that's yeah. my best that's, Zoolander, I don't have a Zoolander. So, so they've, they've got to have um, a real feel of genuine emotion in there. Right. So whatever we're doing, we're directing, we're cracking jokes all the time on that's our really shoot. Um, you know, whatever it takes, singing, dancing, playing music on So there's the another phone. shot of that same trip that I really like. And uh, so the model has a couple of uh, birds and she's got an I Love Me shirt on. Yeah, yeah. And she's got that great smile. So is that sort of the, how you got that um, emotion out of her? Yeah, just... exactly. Uh, well, besides the ridiculousness of um, being in a cage full of rainbow parrots um, <laughs> yeah. who are flying all around us at different angles. So that kind of creates its own little humor there. But yeah, we were cracking jokes and, and I think it's great to develop a, a repertoire um, mm -hmm. with who you're shooting with. You really need to to become a personality with them and, and someone real and just go out and, go out and have fun for lifestyle work is, is the end result because what you're trying to sell is go here, be here because it's a great time. Right. So you've got to be able to enact a certain amount of that while you're shooting it. Um, so yeah, she had parrots flying around. I think she was smiling so much too because I was I was sitting there shooting. I had three or four starting to fly o all over me. Right. So I'm taking the shot and I've got a parrot on my head, one on my shoulder, one biting the camera strap on the other side. <laughs> so. And you got something good. Yeah, so awesome. and then we took a, a number of shots that way, but it was always looking in there. Where's the light coming from? How does that enhance the shot? Um, and uh, I think I bought some of the wardrobe out there. That's usually um, sometimes you depend on what the model can bring, sometimes you can bring in a stylist, and other times you have a right. great idea, um, not much budget for it on a personal test, and you say, oh, well, let me try and find a shirt like that. So went out, um, you know, found it on a clearance rack. Brought it I, in. You know, I knew I was looking for some sort of rainbow colored in the shirt, and that would complement um, with the birds, and there you have it. There you got it. Okay, well, and then how do people find you online? What's your website? Um, uh, you can find me uh, anytime. Uh, it's uh, Matthew Dutal, M A T T H E W D U T I L E uh, dot com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, all that. I try to stay, you know, networked up. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm out there. If you pretty much Google my name, you'll you'll find me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much Thanks for joining so much, us Mark. today. <laughs> all right. Well, there you have it, all the tips and tricks from Matt. Remember, you can see his work at MatthewDutile.com or just visit the Adorama Learning Center for links to the websites that we talked about in this episode. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Please join us again next week right here on Adorama TV. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.